Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over are seven different tools that you can use to measure your indoor wet bulb temperature in order to check the refrigerant charge of a running air conditioning system that has a piston orifice. To take your wet bulb measurement, you can have a thermometer with a wet sock on the end, and you could put this in front of your return grill where the air is blowing by it or inside of a duct hole. This one right here is a sling psychrometer, and I'll show you that one in a little bit. And you are literally swinging it in front of the return grill in order to get your wet bulb temperature. Here we have a standard temp reader, and you have a K-type bead temp sensor with a wet sock over top of that. So that can be used as well. And this one can just be used for your standard temperature outside, your, your dry bulb temperature. And right here we have a psychrometer so this is a digital psychrometer and this uh, sensor right here is a little bit too big to put into your return duct but these here uh, are going to be able to get you a more accurate wet bulb temperature because you want to get as close to right before the evaporator coil as possible so right upstream of the evap coil and you could drill a hole in the return duct and put this this psychrometer into the duct in order to take your reading. Now this one is gonna take a little bit bigger than a 3 8 hole, that will be a half inch hole and you can just put a duct plug on it afterwards. So you gotta remember sometimes your return duct is gonna be maybe, maybe it's in the attic or something like that. So if you take it at the grill, it may change by the time it gets over to the system or maybe there's some, some holes in the ductwork or something like that. Here you have a induct, a dual psychrometer and this one you can get your reading and it will transmit wirelessly to your digital manifold gauge set. Or you could also use it without a, the digital manifold gauge set as well. But you gotta remember as the system runs, your wet bulb's gonna lower and that's gonna make your target superheat change. This right here is a wireless probe and through an app you can go ahead and measure your indoor wet bulb temperature in real time and you can use the Field Piece Job Link app or another app for that. Now all these tools are linked down in the description section below and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how each of these tools work. Now we're at our air handler and we have our evaporator coil here, our filter here, and here's a return. And we have our thermometer with our wet sock. And we're just gonna insert this and see what our wet bulb temperature is. We gotta give this a little bit of time, although I did just have this in this return here beforehand. So we're reading right about 66 it looks like, but you would wanna keep that in there for about two minutes. You have to have air blowing by it. So if anything, we're at about 65, 66 degrees. But once again, you have to keep that in there for a couple minutes. Here's our sling psychrometer, and you're gonna need to wet the sock right here, and you can take the, the cap off on the end. I was just rotating this ahead of time before I even started recording, but we should be pretty close. You normally have to rotate this for about two minutes in order to get a good wet bulb temperature reading. So you need the evaporation effect on the thermometer. So let's see where we're at right now. We should be right around 65 or so. And if you can see between 60 and 70, we're right at about 65 and a half, almost 66. So that's our wet bulb temperature. Here's our temp reader with our K-type bead temp sensor with a wet sock over it. And I did have this in the duct uh, a few seconds ago, so it should be pretty close to what it's supposed to be. So right about 64.3, but you would normally leave this in the duct for about, say, two minutes or so. But you don't want to dry out the sock either, so 64.1. Here's our wet bulb psychrometer, so we're just going to turn it on and then press wet bulb and get our reading. So it looks like we're reading right about 65.8 for our wet bulb, right about 66 right now. So that's that's our wet bulb temperature. Here's another digital psychrometer, and we're just going to go ahead and turn it on. And then we're going to press our wet bulb. Hold that in, and we'll hit it again. And now we have our reading. So we are at 65.8 once again. So there it is. Here we are outside with our digital manifold gauge set, and we need to determine what our target superheat is. So our manifold should recognize these other wireless tools here. And so you see our indoor wet bulb that's flashing right now and it should come up. So we have 67.9, but I'm gonna take this inside to our return. And then we have our outdoor dry bulb temperature, which we're gonna measure about a foot away from the grill here. Here's our induct dual psychrometer. Now I only have 
one sensor on this right now just to show you and this one will transmit a wireless wet bulb temperature out to the digital manifold set such as the S-Man 460 or S-Man 480. But right now we're reading a wet bulb temperature of right about 65 degrees but we just want to give it a sec just to make sure we're registering the right temperature. So it's, it's very important to make sure that you're taking your measurement in the return duct right near the unit because that between the grill inside the house or the building and where the air handler is What's going to happen is that duct might be in the basement or the crawl space or the attic. You don't know if it's sucking air in through some leaks in the duct. So this is going to give you the most accurate measurement in the return duct within a, a foot or so of the evaporator coil. So you see that we're reading right about 64.6. So our indoor wet bulb temperature is 63.7 degrees and our outdoor dry bulb is very close to 78 degrees. Now this temp meter has a temp probe that you're going to want to keep about a foot away from this coil where it's sucking the air into the outdoor unit. And then we have a target superheat of 15.8 degrees. And so you want to compare that to your actual superheat while the system's running. And you want to have the system running for about 15 minutes before checking the refrigerant charge and comparing your target superheat to your actual superheat. If your actual total superheat is higher than your target, then you're undercharged. But if you have an actual superheat that's lower than your target, then you're overcharged. Here's our temperature probe. and. On this tool we have it marked on the back that little dip switch is set on return so we can just put it right into the return and here's our app and you see that we have 63.8 degrees is our wet bulb temperature so if you wanted to figure out what the target superheat is we need to go ahead and connect our other uh, probes on first so if you don't have say wireless tools or a digital manifold gauge set to calculate your target superheat for you, I'm going to go ahead and give you the walkthrough on that next. If you haven't checked out our book, you should check out the full outline over at our website so you can see what's all inside, but we have our target superheat chart here. We also have our target superheat chart on our quick reference polystyrene cards. And we have our indoor wet bulb temperature right here, say we have a measurement of 64 degrees. If we line that up with our dry bulb temperature over here, you can see that our target superheat is 14 degrees. Now, as the system runs, the wet bulb temperature is going to lower. So say it lowers to 62 degrees, then your target superheat is going to lower as well, and we're down at 12 degrees of target superheat. So that's how you do it. You just got to remember that if you don't have wireless tools, you got to continually recheck your indoor wet bulb temperature and your dry bulb temperature usually stays roughly the same, but you just got to keep that in mind. In addition to the knowledge I'm trying to teach in this book, we also have a thousand question workbook so you can apply that knowledge and then also comes with a answer key so that you can check to make sure that your answers are correct. We also have our quick reference cards and those are used for troubleshooting and checking the charge. And they also have refrigerant weights in the PT chart. So all this is available over at our website at acservicetech.com and also at amazon.com. We have the book available in an ebook format at our website and also Google Play. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.